Good afternoon, everyone. Arctic Circle is not escaping the heat, and the focus is on Banak. But the media forgets to tell you over in Greenland and west and over to the east as well. Below normal temperatures in the Arctic Circle, 80 degrees north. Hottest July in 250 years in Sweden. Oh, that doesn't match up with the sunspot cycles in the grand solar minimums. Let's move on. Yellow Circle, Arctic temperatures 80 degrees north, still below normal. How about that ice concentration? Five-year highs. Anywhere it's yellow is still 10 feet thick. 550 billion new tons of ice on Greenland and the blue line at the top. Below normal melting now. Look at Antarctica on this chart. Stable. Arctic starting to swing down. And let's not forget all the raging floods across Europe. And during these uncertain times of all these weather calamities happening due to the grand solar minimum, you're absolutely going to need to grow some of your own food. The ADAPT 2030 link is below in the description box, as well as the links to tonight's images and stories. And join me in about eight hours for Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, Studio A, where I'm going to cover in depth many of these changes over the last two weeks that have been happening. And also the tri-weekly podcast, Mini Ice Age Conversations. The link's below. Click on that. It'll take you to the newest episodes. Peter Temple talking about cycles in economy and society. If you haven't heard in the news, the equatorial vortex pulling up all the way to the Arctic, sending record heat to selected areas at 70 degrees north. Now 70 degrees north is just a sliver into the Arctic Circle. It actually starts at 66 degrees north, which we'll see on the map here. But an enormous amount of the stories are focused on Banak, which is indicated there in the blue box, 31 degrees Celsius. It broke records, so the media focusing on this one. This will take us up to July 30th. It reached 32 degrees Celsius. And this area is exactly 70 degrees north latitude. Moving on to August 1st. Oh, the temperatures are starting to drop back again. Let's zoom in on that. And as quickly as the heat was there, it's gone. It's down to 16 degrees Celsius today, August 2nd. They also forgot to tell you about the below freezing temperatures, literally one degree Celsius below freezing, just across the other side of the Arctic over north above Alaska. So the news stories are focused on this 70 degrees north latitude, what's considered the Arctic Circle. But they don't want to touch anything that's 80 degrees north and above because that's below normal temperatures. Arctic Circle actually starts at 66 degrees north and goes up to the North Pole at 90 north. And Euronews as well, right at Banak, Norway. It seems to be the center point of this heating that everybody can report on. It's the same story, just regurgitated again and again and again in the media. Although I'm still trying to track this down, whether it's false or true, it's the first time in August that they've ever had a temperature over 30 degrees, ever. Now, while all the focus over these last three days was on the heat, suddenly it dropped to 16 degrees Celsius from 32. That is a 50% drop in the temperature in a single day. You're not hearing much about that. But as we look around the 80 degree north and above to the North Pole, anywhere you see blue, that's freezing. They're not talking about the below normal temperatures that they're seeing across 80 degrees north and above. It's got to be only the heat in a selected location in the Scandinavian countries. I love how there's such a diametric opposite in the reporting of the news too, where the World Meteorological Organization touts it as the heat wave is exceptional. And it beat the seasonal average from Iceland to Scandinavia and the Baltic countries. See how they only focused on that warm part. They didn't go to the rest of the Arctic where it's been below normal temperatures. Now, so far in all of July, the average temperature for 80 degrees north up to the North Pole has been below average. I circled that in the orange circle. The red is the temperatures. 
The green is the 1958 to 2002 average. That has been below average for a month and a half and you have not heard a squeak out of the media about that. Physics.org, talking about heat waves from the Arctic to Japan, they even mentioned the hottest July in at least 250 years in Sweden. And I thought that's interesting. We're going into a multi-century cycle in the grand solar minimum. So let's take a look at sunspots since the 1600s. If we go back 250 years, and they said at least 250 years, if we push that back a little bit, we're going to come right back into the modern minimum. So there you go, physics.org even verifies cyclic activity in our sun based on heat and cold in their own article. Excellent job on that. And I do want to give a shout out here to French climate expert Jean José, quoted also as saying, each individual event is very difficult to attribute directly to human activity. That is so true. And again, I'll give it to physics.org for putting these opposite opinions in the article for you as the reader to decide which one is true. And case in point, in the very next paragraph, they talk about the World Meteorological Organization saying climate change is causing by greenhouse gases, all the heating, and by 2050 or somewhere around there, these heat waves will be normal. But somehow the Arctic ice at seven-year highs doesn't make the media. This is the Arctic sea ice thickness, so in the middle, pretty much at 90 degrees north where that North Pole is, where you still get that yellow and tinge of red, that is at least 10 foot thick sea ice. West of Baffin Island, it's still pegging at 15 foot thick plus, and anywhere coastal North Canada, we're still looking at, I don't know, 14, 15 foot thick ice. The teal color that pervades an enormous amount of the Arctic, at least half of it up there, six foot thick. That purple that you're seeing, three feet thick. The Arctic melt season ends in a month. Do you think all that will melt off? Yes or no? And also, when you see that black bar and the small chart there, that's this year's ice. And all those other lines that are below that, that's lower ice concentrations over the last seven years. Another inconvenient fact, Greenland, the melting of the gigatons below average. As you can see from today, August 2nd, that blue line is actually below the 30 year average. That's in the top graphic and moving to the bottom of the chart here, that blue line also indicates how much new ice has been added to Greenland this year, well above the average. That's the mean from 1981 to 2010, 30 years of coverage, very short amount of time. But anyway, 550 billion new tons so far. And again, the melt season just ends in another eh, month. Jumping over to climate for you, I've linked that below in the description box as well. Taking a look at 1979, these are all the satellite temperature measurements, Arctic above, Antarctic below. This brings us up to June 2018, lagging a couple months behind, of course. In Antarctica, that's been trending flat or down for how many years now? And in addition to the droughts going on in some places that are affecting agriculture, take a look at the floods in Austria. It was August 1st, yesterday. Athens, Greece, swimming pool for the automobiles, raging rivers in the streets, sewers backing up, manhole covers popping off, grand solar minimum effects all around us, but the media keeps saying it's CO2. Hmm, they don't talk about the equatorial vortex. I wonder why not. Or the sunspots, or the cosmic rays, or the repeating cycles in history. So it's going to be up to you to do your own research and find your own information because the fight for the control of the narrative of why all these events are happening is in full swing. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of information, please remember to click that subscribe button, hit the bell to get the latest notifications, 
and also a deeper analysis, mini Ice Age conversations, tri-weekly podcast, anywhere podcasts are hosted across the net.